This episode of Behind the Video is brought to you by the Independent Media Network. The Independent Media Network helps journalists and content creators create their own jobs by building sustainable online businesses. If you're an unemployed or underemployed journalist or content creator, visit imnct.com for more information. Hey everybody, this is Lon Seiben. We are back for Behind the Video. This is episode 69, dude. And joining me, as always, is my lovely and talented co-host from the other coast, Tim Street. Tim, what's happening? Lon, Lon, I, I, I'm kind of on East Coast time, but I don't feel like it. I, <laughs> You're in like that yeah. limbo zone of... Uh, yeah, I, we got to switch the time of this show. We got it. We got people need to send us when they want to watch it, but they can watch. They can listen to it whenever they want, just by uh, catching it on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you have a podcatcher, and uh, you can listen to our show. So you don't have to get up if you're in Los Angeles at eight thirty on a Sunday morning <laughs> or eleven thirty. And we do have a guest. Who we I do, hear. and I'm really excited here. So who, who we got? Cackling in the background. Hi guys, Alonzo. How are you? Very good. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, Alonzo, tell us about yourself. What do you do, and, and what's this new project that you have? Um, I am a filmmaker. Um, I'm originally from Lima, Peru. So I've, been a, I've been in L.A. for just about 10 years, and uh, I, I did a feature film earlier this year uh, called The Story of Luke uh, with uh, Lou Taylor Pucci and Seth Green. So I've been concentrating uh, professionally, I guess, mostly on, on uh, feature films. I've done uh, uh, a lot of screenwriting, uh, some documentary work as well. Uh, but uh, I have gotten quite obsessed with uh, with interactivity. You know, um, um, I'm kind of one of those guys that doesn't think just making movies bigger and louder, you know, and just adding more 3D type stuff is is the answer. And, you know, I, I'm really looking for uh, something that actually changes the experience of 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 how you, you know, of what is a movie and how you experience it and what what the audience can can do with it. Um, so uh, that's that's how this new project came about. It's called uh, Untitled Murder Project, and it's interactive. And, and uh, a lot of people, I think, uh, when when uh, first of all, it was very hard to explain the project in the beginning because uh, uh, there's not that many projects like that out there. And uh, when you say interactive uh, interactive film or interactive web series, I think a lot of people think about like choose your own adventure or things like that. Um, and this is a little different because. Um, you don't get to choose what ending it is. You just get to choose how you experience the film. Like you choose the order instead of me and this filmmaker telling you you watch this scene after this one after this in this particular order. Uh, it was designed to be uh, watched by the audience in honestly whatever order they want to. Um, and that uh, the idea was that that was part of the the experience. So how long is the overall project? Like how many minutes of video do you have? Uh, we have 49 episodes, that, and they're between like two, and the longest one is seven, but th that's like a freak, you know, most of them are right around three minutes, um, and it's total right about three hours. Um, so it was, yeah, it's, it's a lot of content. It's so like a, in, in, the, in the early days of television, they took radio shows and had people standing in front of microphones doing radio shows on TV. The format hadn't been developed yet, and... The, it wasn't until uh, a guy named Desi Arnaz did a show called I Love Lucy <laughs> that we had a multi-camera sitcom format. Do you see what you're doing here as a new format, a new way of telling a story on the Internet and using the interactivity of the Internet to tell a story? Um, I definitely think so. Uh, I think it's very early stages. <laughs> uh, I, I think we're almost, just in general, way too early to figure out what are those formats that are going to stick. Uh, there may be a lot of formats that come out of there just because there's so many options, you know. But, like, what is the perfect, uh, you know, time length, you know, for, for, for a project like this? You know, how many episodes are going to be in it? You know, what is the interactivity going to look like? Um, I, I... Uh, for me, for this project, this is kind of what worked for me. This is, uh, but, but you know, I, I'm hoping you know, there's other ideas that I have that, that, that do it, do it a little differently. So, so um, I, I think it's an option, uh, and and a lot of times they all, I do pitch it as interactive film because it's it has a beginning and an end. You know, it's it's, it's uh, it, it doesn't it's not like a series that keeps keeps going. So so uh, I, I I do. So think what it, it's, what is the the basic story? Just give us a synopsis. So. Oh, absolutely. Um, well. If you watch the trailer, pretty much what you figure out happens is that there's uh, there's been an affair, and then there's this woman that's kind of playing with a lot of people. She's the one that that was uh, the woman who had the uh, uh, the other woman, you know. Uh, so she she's kind of messing with a group of people, and then she ends up dead, 
you know, and, and that's all we know. We, we know there's been some kind of affairs and, you know, and dirt, and then somebody's dead. So this woman is dead. And that's pretty much all I want you to know. And then the idea is that then you kind of start piecing together what's, you know, by watching the episodes in whatever order you want, you start piecing together what the story is. Uh, uh, in the beginning uh, chapters, it's divided up in five chapters. Uh, chapters one and two are live right now. And the beginnings are all kind of introductions, uh, telling you a little bit about the backstory and explaining a little bit about the the... the the dead woman that just uh, showed up in in, the, in this brunch <laughs> that these friends were having, um, and then later on the idea is that you know every chapter you uh, you think it's somebody else you know it's it's you know the 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 guilt is pointed at somebody else, uh, um, and that's kind of how they organized. So so with this, um, could you package it up and put it in ebook form? Uh, probably. Uh, we definitely thought about doing an app, uh, uh, you know, a, an app or an ebook or something like an interactive. Form would definitely be a, a way to do this. Um, uh, the reason I kind of uh, just use the YouTube annotations tool right now is be just because it's first of all it's so easy to do, and and YouTube is so social that it's a, it's it is maybe easier to discover things on there than than like if you do an, an app or or an ebook uh, by an unknown author. So that was kind of the thinking about just concentrating on 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 YouTube for now. Um, uh, but later on, you know, I would love to do, uh, you know, more projects, maybe even this one, and package it in a different way. So, is is this project completely shot, or are you still shooting it? Where where are you at? No, no, it's completely done, uh, uh, and that's why it is it is kind of more like a like a film in that way, you know. Um, and and it is a it is actually the continuation of something else I did um, uh, two years ago. Uh, before I shot my feature, I had done this other project called Untitled Fiction Project. Um, and that was, and it's, uh, it's, it's a direct uh, continuation of that. That project was basically just about an affair, um, an, an affair, and how it, you know, messes up a relationship. Um, and and that one was more like a series. That that one actually was was really fun to do because, uh, uh, first of all, it was unscripted, uh, kind of like this one. This one was unscripted as well. Uh, we had uh, uh, general outlines, but we improvised the dialogue with the actors on set. Um, uh, but that one we shot, we edited, we posted. Uh, we got comments, and then we went out again and, and did the next one. So it was more like that was more like a series, and we actually didn't even know how it was going to end. You know, when when I did the first episode, I had no clue what was going to happen. You know, um, and and that was kind of the the exercise, the the challenge. You know, this one was a little different because uh, you know once you built in a little interactivity, I think you have to have a plan. Uh, you know, um, so there was a lot of thought thought in the structure of it, um, uh, but we kind of did keep the. The actual episodes, the dialogue, and all that still improvised, uh, but but we did have an overall view of what the structure of the of the, of the whole project was going to be. And what, that's got to bring some. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Tim. Uh, I was going to say, what what's kind of your business model here? What what's the best case scenario? What are you looking <laughs> to do? Uh, you know what? Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I teach it actually. I teach a new media class, and uh, I, I teach as well directing and screenwriting. And that's what's one thing I talk a lot about with the students. You know. You know how 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 the hell are you gonna you know when when you do your business plans for your online you know projects? Uh, I did not have a, a business plan in the sense that this is an experiment for me. Um, I I don't expect to make any money off of it. Uh, I I didn't invest that much money on it. It, it was true. I invested a lot of time, you know, and a lot of people helped me. Out. A lot of people joined in, but there was not a, a lot of money invested. Uh, I uh, to me the the overall goal is to be like a proof of concept. You know, to to Very do cool. other stuff. You know, that really is the ultimate goal. I hope as many people as can watch it, but it's not something that you know. I didn't even you know click on monetize on YouTube. You know, I don't want to put like a you know ads on it right now because the idea is that uh, uh, also it's so new that 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 uh, you know we have to figure out if even people want to watch something like this. Um, I'm hoping they do. Uh, but but it is uh, to me it's a proof of concept. It's it's you know uh, this is this is what I think works. Uh, let's let's try it out. And the quality, the acting quality is fantastic. And I was thinking back as I was looking at this, um, you know, the, the menu that you have at the end of the trailer to kind of guide you through it. And I was right. reminded of some of these interactive experiments during the CD-ROM era. And, yeah. you know, uh, the, the problem back then, of course, was that the, the acting was terrible and then the, the, the audience were kids with game consoles and, and maybe some <laughs> t techies with, with something there. So what, what is, how do you write for this? Because you have to assume that not everyone is going to watch every part of the series, right? They, may, they might take a different right. path through the story. How, how, does, how do you account for that in writing? Um, well, well uh, it, it's a tricky one because you always assume, I guess as a... As a when when you when you write a movie, you you know people have watched what came before, 
you know, uh, you know, if you're if you're in the middle, you assume people watch what came before, right? Um, I, I guess if they watch it on TV before in the olden days, they could have just co come in at a later point, you know. But uh, and this one, you know, I, I I did assume that somebody, for example, could you know just find a video that was in chapter three, and and uh, and not know anything about it and be like, okay, you know, somebody, you know. You know, for some reason, they find this video in, ch in chapter three that's way in, you know, in the middle. How how would they understand the story? And what I was hoping, uh, kind of the plan was to make every episode, you know, kind of a little self-standing scene. Uh, that it's not like you would be confused; you'd be interested. But then, if you wanted to know more, obviously, the menus always at the end of every video. There's a menu, so you can you know hopefully figure out that if you want to watch what came before, just you know, click click uh, click on the links, click on the uh, previous chapter link, you know. Uh, go for it. So that was kind of the plan, um, uh, the, the the idea, and 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 yeah, I, I do assume that that even some people who watch it, you know, may skip some episodes. Um, um, unfortunately, you know, if, if for example, uh, one thing that came up very early, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if this was an app, when somebody watches a video, actually, actually, you know, let them know that they've already watched it. You know, some, somehow dim it down so they right. keep track of what they've watched. You know, kind of like in a video game, right? You play a level, you know, that level comes up as played. Uh, in YouTube, unfortunately, I couldn't do that. I know I, all I can do is say, you know, do you want to replay this one? You know, there's no way for me to tell everybody, you know, that they've already watched, uh, uh, you know, a certain one. So, so there is kind of a uh, an own a known factor that uh, I will see how how it goes. But right. but I'm hoping, you know, if you want to watch more, you can always watch more. I guess I guess that's the option I gave people. What, right, what about on mobile? That that was a that was a, a an issue that came up because uh, YouTube annotations don't work on mobile yet. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they will at some point because it's such a cool feature. You can do so you much with both, it. You and me both, brother. <laughs> All of us. All I was actually us. really annoyed. I was hoping because they kept coming up with new apps for the for Android and, and, and iPhone, and, and I just I was like, why don't you just do? I'm sure there's some kind of technical issue, you know, because people they're gonna. I'm sure it's kind of like a, you know, uh, you know, uh, a user thing of like, you know, how to, you know, to not that get confused, you know, an experience thing probably. But but I'm hoping at some point they do it. Uh, I do. I will have. Uh, there's there's links. There's a text uh, link in, in the description of every video. So um, you know the the first thing in the description is mobile. You know use this menu be below, and it's just a bunch of links to, to the same thing. You know, uh, for example, you know in the uh, right now timeline, you know watch video three. You know, so, so they can click on on the links instead of uh, on the screen. But the screen is definitely the the better experience, unfortunately, uh, right now. You know, I, I I do wish it would work on both. It seems yeah. like you got to wait a little bit for the for the technology to catch up and, and whatnot. I was looking on here too, and you've been getting some audience feedback too. Maybe some suggestions as to how to yes. do the yes. navigation. Yes. So, <laughs> is that going to guide you as as you do the next couple of chapters? Because that I, I would imagine, you know, typically we get audience feedback on the story, but it looks like there's more technical questions <laughs> about it, right? It, it it is a little technical. Uh, I have been getting some stuff with that, and I think the the main one that maybe I didn't realize, you know, when I set this up, is that it it is so different than that uh, people are. I think in general audiences are 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 used to watching one thing after another. You know, they're 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 used to saying what comes next. You know, and 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 being told what comes next. You know, and and being able to either choose what comes next or what comes before. But that's pretty pretty much where it stands right now. You know, and and the 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 challenge for this has been that you know there is no before and there's no next. You know, uh, and I've been getting some questions about that. You know, I I don't I don't get you know what came before. Where do I start? Where do I go next? I'm like well. You choose, you know. So, so actually, we're adding basically just a little text to the menus to say, pretty much you choose, you know. Uh, <laughs> choose and and I, I, th yeah. I think that that kind of independence is something that throws people off because they're not used to it. So they think it's a mistake, you know. That, that I'm I'm confusing you uh, when actually the whole point is you choose, you know. I I don't right. you know that the whole point is that you know uh, I uh, when, when the whole thing is up, we will probably make a, a playlist that lets people watch it in in. Um, in chronological uh, order, if they want to, yeah, uh, I think because be I think a, I think yeah. a lot of people do want to watch it that way uh, until they're all up. Unfortunately, I can't do that because you know there's always a break. Where, you know, there's three timelines going on: the right now, the hours ago, and the weeks ago. And each block, it continue. Each chapter continues that timeline. So, so right now, I, there's really no chronological order. It's kind of, it kind of jumps around. Uh, the easiest, uh, what, what I try to explain to people is that look at it as flashbacks. You know, start with the right now if you want, and everything else is a flashback. And that's easy. I think that's easier to understand because uh, movies do that. You know, movies do jump uh, back and forth in time a lot, um, and they just call it's just called a flashback. Um, um, so it, you could look at this. So as, this is called a clickback. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> exactly. You know? right. uh, but but I don't know. You know, we we did we did a we did a bunch of tests actually before with people, and and uh, uh, really the the funnest tests we did are when we got a group of people, and, and like I told, basically I assigned one person as the the person in charge of navigating, you know, and and they could make the decision of what they watch next. And it was really fun to see, you know, what decisions, you know, uh, because what it does is it, it makes you stop and think and strategize a little bit about when, what, what to know what, you know, because you could find out, you know, that, you know, the, the present or, and some people like to start backwards, you know, some, some people like to jump around, some people like to start in the present and go backwards, some people like to start in the, in, in the past and go forward. So it, it, it's, it's been kind of a taste thing I've, I've, I've found out so far. Uh, but I do want to kind of minimize the confusion as to what to do. So we are definitely adding, you know, at least a little, you know, a little, a little, uh, hopefully unintrusive instruction on the menus that say, that pretty much say, you know, click on any episode you would like. Uh, you choose the order. You know, that is what it's designed mm -hmm. to do. You know, something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It might be kind of fun to have the community maybe come up with some some navigation options. Maybe yeah. a couple of different playlists based <laughs> on right. I mean, it, it, yeah, now, Can course. you follow specific characters through the story, or is it more is it more based on the time that events occur? Um, no, no, and that that was uh, one of the ideas maybe in the beginning that we had, and uh, uh, but but it was uh, I didn't design it that that particular <laughs> way uh, just because. Um, kind of the, the way that I mean, there was some some uh, there was a lot of choices that I made by designing each chapter. You know, like I said, uh, each chapter hopefully you you lay the blame on somebody else, right? So right. so since this designed that way, then then uh, then going by each character might mess that up a little. And, and actually, a lot of the scenes involved a lot of characters. You know, we have a lot of scenes where it's eight people <laughs> and six how, people. How many, um, how many days of shooting did you do? Uh, total probably around uh, I don't know maybe fifteen days something like that. Wow, uh, like a feature. So, so. And and would you shoot it on? Uh, actually, uh, maybe more because we do include the previous, uh, including the 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 first chapter, which is actually the the previous series, the title fiction project, the the backstory, including that. It's probably been more like twenty days, something like that. Oh wow, so this uh, is a pretty extensive project here. It has been, you know, it, it, it's, 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 been, it's been a lot of work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a labor that, of love, it, I guess, right? It, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, only obsession could, could do something like this. And, and do you see, uh, you know, maybe that this, this could morph into developing a platform to make this kind of storytelling easier for the audience to consume? Yeah, no, I, re I really hope so. Uh, I, I hope uh, my ultimate goal is to set up. A, uh, I want to set up the the brand, or you know, our linear brand, brand, the linear TV brand, because I, I want to do more programming like this. I, I want to be able to, and at some point, I want to do hope to to jump to to an app, you know, because I, I do think that's maybe the best way to do it. You know, an app that 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 connects to your TV, you know, uh, that that so so you can use that to navigate. I think that's right now, you know. Probably the best way to 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 do something like this, you know. Uh, um, I, I like kind of that second screen way of doing things because I still like the 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 experience of watching something in a bigger screen, you know. But but having some choices on on the other screen, so so that's kind of like my ultimate goal of, of setting up, you know, uh, nonlinear stories, uh, you know, deep kind of story worlds, uh, uh, lots of characters, you know, interesting interesting ideas, have the audience involved somehow. Um, uh, right now, it's on YouTube. I, I think I think it's still going to be a very good platform to use, uh, um, and maybe they will keep tweaking the way they do things with their annotations and other features. Where maybe that could be a platform for something like this. Uh, but but you know um, maybe an apps or or the future as well. Because I could I could sense like a Kickstarter coming out of this. Once you build some <laughs> audience, um, at, like our friend Bernie yeah. did, right? Uh, and, and Tim, you know, you Tim, you've done some work with eBooks, and you, Tim has a a great uh, eBook called Vids, which is on the. Uh, the iTunes bookstore, the Apple bookstore, cool. and and it involves video and it involves. I don't know if, if, if I think Tim, your story is more linear, right? But I mean, could this be something that might yeah, work? Absolutely for him? no. I, I mean, the the story that I set up originally started out where you went to this girl's website of revenge, where she had had an affair with a guy, and um, she built a website of revenge. She stalked him, caught him with other women, and oh wow, saw that <laughs> online. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, the website you could navigate and you could choose uh, very similar. You could choose what you watched, but okay. the book um, is set up so that you know you can turn the page and go to the next thing. And uh -huh. and so um, 
the choice was taken away, and the only choice you have is to close the book or turn the page uh, uh -huh. right now <laughs> are, are, your, are your choices. But it is a revenue stream as opposed to uh, a right. $4,000 a month bandwidth bill. So, right, 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 right. So it could work out there. Well, this is an exciting there project. I, I, I took a class in college called Hypertext Literature, and, <laughs> and it was... Um, you know, it was one of those classes that you thought would just be kind of the way to get your English credit out of the way, and it turned out to be a really fascinating class. This was back in 95, 96, when all of this stuff was, was new, and we had all these, right. uh, these hypertext, um, uh, you know, I think some of them were written in HyperStudio, actually, on the old Mac, and okay. it, was, it was fascinating because the authors, you know, I don't think we interviewed any authors, but we talked about the process of writing one of these books and just trying to uh, figure out what the user might do what the audience or the reader might do as they as they go through these stories, it's uh, it, it is very complex. But I, I have to say, you know, watching what you put together here, it's it, the the production quality is better than any of these interactive things that I've ever seen. What what, what were the the actors that you hired to do this? What was what was their reaction to it? Were they um, was this different for them, or was it <laughs> mostly? Uh, they, they, a lot of them, uh, since I had used a lot of the actors that they used the first time around, when it wasn't uh, you know not nonlinear, um, uh, they they understood the story. Uh, I, I think a lot of them did, did kind of get this whole, uh, you know, new way of doing things. The way we shot it, uh, uh, when, when you shoot like a, a feature, you do shoot things out of order. <laughs> so it's, it wasn't it wasn't the big surprise. You know, most actors are used to going back and forth. You know, to, to basically have a you know a nonlinear shoot because it's just the way it is. You know, you shoot by locations and you right. know depending you know people's availability. So it's actually a very normal thing on set. I don't think anybody you know uh, um, you didn't see what was so different at that point. Uh, apart from, I mean, the really, the really different thing was this whole like uh, the the unscripted uh, uh, element of it. You know, I had to get actors w that were willing to do that and they were willing to experiment. Um, uh, so, so uh, basically, I casted all, all these all these actors are 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 uh, uh, they they uh, they uh, they train their craft at a at a place called the Gloria Gifford Conservatory. So they're basically all acting students in a way. You know, they they've all had professional experience, but they all still train, and that's where I found them. You know, the uh, the, the school is very improv heavy, and I wanted people who would be very comfortable improvising. Um, so so that, that that's kind of where I found them. You know, I, I went to see a lot of them perform in plays and things like that, and I kind of picked and choose who I thought would be good, and actually built their characters around themselves. You know, uh, I, I had seen what they did, and 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 I, I built the their their characters in, in the project around uh, what what I liked about what, what I saw uh, in them. So so I know it was and a very them, fun. And one, I guess and one of them's a murderer, Ben. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so keep watching to see what happens there. Which one is uh, capable of it, right? <laughs> Hopefully, they'll all be capable at some point. That's when it get, really gets fun, right? That's uh, right. But but uh, yeah, so it was it was a very fun project. That was, I guess, what was so different. I mean, the actual shoot it was it was very different than the traditional shoots. You know, I, I've I've shot bigger things. I've shot I shot a movie with you know Union crews and all that. This one was just me and them, you know, so it was a right. very, very, you know, I operated, you know, the sound is not as good as I wanted because it's just, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a directional mic on the camera, you know, and that right. was kind of the style, we went for the kind of documentary style, um, you know, even though at some point maybe we could have gotten, you know, uh, a, a sound guy to come in, you know, it's, uh, the, the way we shot, the, the structure we did, the, the speed at which we worked, uh, at least for this one, I, I I kind of decided to kind of keep it like that. It was literally just me and them. And I, and, I love uh, that. It's it's a fun way to work, isn't it? it? It's it's very fun because you know when once you get you know I love making you know bigger projects, but a lot of times you know the the, the technical side takes over. You now, know. Did, and, did and, you have did you have an assistant to download your media? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it was a complete. It was a, it was a complete one. My bad. I had you know my my producer. So I had a lot of help in the production side and like the finding things and getting them set up. You know, uh, mm -hmm. my, my my wife is my producer. She, I work with her in other projects. So she so in the in the creative and like developing the the structure and the, and the getting things set up. I actually had a lot of help. Thank God. You know, the actual on the set though, I I did it. You know, basically basically you know the food showed up uh, at certain times. And <laughs> That's that the most important it, thing. You know, right. and 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 then uh, they made sure we were cool with the homeowners and and you know and nobody bothered us but apart from that we were on our own uh, I I did not have somebody downloading media I just made sure I had enough cards you know uh, uh, so we would shoot a lot you know every day you know like one scene you know I think I calculated that that I think we shoot 
uh, the, the ratio is like 20 to 1 or something like that, right? So, so there, there was a lot of footage. So I just made sure. You know, I, I've done docs before, so I, I, you know, I, I kind of knew the, the amount of footage that you could shoot in a day. So I just made sure I had enough, uh, enough, enough cards. And, uh, and what, not have, what did you shoot it on? What camera? Uh, it was a Canon 5D Mark II. You know, uh, Great. So, uh, weapon of that's, choice, right? <laughs> I wish I had the Mark III at that point, but but uh, that's that's what I had, great. and that's what I used. No, no, it's it's yeah. totally fine. Well, it's, it's what would you camera. have done? What would you have done different if you'd have had the Mark III? Uh, well, you know, it, it is kind of a, a little some some technical things that you know I, I don't know if you know. Hopefully, most people don't catch, but the Mark II still has a little bit of the moir. You know that that you know when you shoot things with very uh, uh, fine lines, it, it does the squiggly thing. And it's very annoying, and and uh, uh, so sometimes uh, you'll see that you know in any like in any Mark II project you'll see you see the squiggly lines. Um, the uh, the Mark III got the whole uh, the the jello effect a little bit better. It's not gone, but it's a little better. And obviously, since I was doing handheld, that's kind of you know sometimes you know I had to I had to make sure I never whip pans, you know, and 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 that is kind of like uh, when it, when I shoot docs, you know, sometimes you, you do want to do that. So I had to kind of you know just watch out. I didn't do that too much. Because uh, right, you know, because it would look like it goes sideways. You know, yeah, kind of you get the thing. get the, what they call it, the uh, and uh, and uh, oh, sorry. That's what they call that the uh, the jelly the jelly effect there, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. It's also also very annoying. <laughs> uh, uh, but but there are things easy things to to, to kind of work around. The big one for me was since I was basically shooting this myself in in real locations with available light is is the sensitivity to light. You know, the Mark III is much better at that. You know, it's just much more sensitive. You can, you can get uh, you. You, you can shoot things that look better and, and before they start getting noisy, you know, before you have to turn up the, the you know, the, the ISO, the high ISOs are less noisy. And, and I right. did use kind of higher ISOs in some interior stuff, so so that would have been nice. But you know what? It's just, it's really minimal stuff. It's still like a really good camera. I'd go out and shoot something else with it because it's just, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing. It's, uh, I, you do have to kind of build these crazy rigs out of it. Right. Uh, uh, so that, that that is kind of that took a little bit of trial and error to figure out you know what's the I actually used a, a skateboarding rig which I, I found to be just perfect you know I ended up in a skateboarding rig to to do like a, a you know a, kind of a handheld because you could do an underhand thing and all kinds of cool stuff uh, but yeah yeah the, you know it's amazing I think too that we're in an era where not only can you do this stuff with a single camera that that's under five grand um, but mm -hmm. that you have an audience that can watch it. <laughs> essentially for, for free. <laughs> so, right, right. <laughs> uh, and it, even better than free because you get they give you a cut of the action occasionally if you turn the ads on. It's, it, that's true, it, that's true, that's true. And you've been in this industry for a while. I mean, what, what's, what are people, I mean, people are doing this all the time now, right? Like they're trying different things out to see what I think so, I think so. Um, I, I, you know, the uh, my world is mostly mostly film right now. You know, I, I'm hoping to, to meet more of, more more online people, more, more new media uh, because that's really what, what I've known mostly so far. And uh, in fact, Film like for film people, I don't see that that amount of exper experimentation yet. Unfortunately, you know, I think people kind of still trying, uh, you know, w uh, these kind of uh, you know uh, tried and true tested formats. You know, uh, so so I still I don't see in in my world I don't see that much experimentation yet. You know, once once I go online and start seeing what some other people come up with, you know, yeah, there's some very interesting projects out there, very cool stuff, stuff that excites me. You know, I'm hoping though. Uh, that it gets to the point that that it will you know excite other filmmakers because uh, you know just looking at the people like that I went to film school with you know and the and the and the and, the, and all like the students I meet they're still kind of unfortunately uh, and I don't really maybe get completely why but uh, the fil film is still for some reason uh, you know very very sexy and, and the new media I guess it's because it's seen as as an ex exper experimentation and it's maybe not quite there yet and, hey, and man, a lot of the same uh, the same thing with radio man mm -hmm. radio was king and TV <laughs> was, was this toy that nobody wanted to play with right. Yeah. Right, and then right. All of a sudden, whoa! What no, happened? No, no, for sure. No, I, I definitely yeah. think there's going to be a turn at some point, but I think there needs to be more, you know, projects. Uh, you know, right now, like uh, when I teach my new media class, and, and and like, and we show like what are the top channels on YouTube. A lot of like like people who want to be filmmakers, who who love like cinema, look at look at those channels that that are getting all these views and they're getting all subscriptions, and they kind of they, they don't get it, you know, mm. uh, uh, because it is. It it is its own thing right now, you know, and and uh, you know it's it's very you know it's comedy, it's it's these type of things, you know, kind of slapstick comedies and skits are kind of what 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 gets you views in YouTube right now, um, or, or gaming, right? Uh, right? So 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 for somebody who's really interested in in you know in in cinema, you know, it doesn't matter if it's comedy or drama, thrillers, whatever. Maybe they don't see you know YouTube and, and online uh, yet 
as a destination of where they could put their stuff, you know, just because they see what else is out there and they're like, I, you know, I don't want to be, you know, you know, that's not, that's not who, you know, my audience, you know. So, so uh, I, I don't particularly see it that way, but, but I do see that that's kind of the resistance, unfortunately. Uh, and I think it just it will take much more projects, you know, that you can say, hey, I, I actually really like that. Uh, that is a place that I can go. go. And getting things on TV easier, which will be where we need to go. And we have, this is actually a great segue because our next topic of the show, if we get into the news here for a little bit, is the top YouTube channels of the week. And uh, TubeFilter puts this list together of the top channels, and we look at it occasionally because it doesn't often change very much. But um, it is all music, as we can see. Britney Spears is in at number five with 32 million views this week. So uh, not bad for someone who had a few bumps in, in the road there. Uh, Muy App, which is a Turkish mu music channel, has always been in the top 10, and it's uh, number four this week with 36 million views. Miley Cyrus, her reinvention, as horrible as it has been, is apparently not uh, hurting her sales, so she has uh, 43 million views this week. Uh, PewDiePie, which is a, co a combination PewDiePie. of gaming and comedy. Is that PewDiePie? Is that what he calls it? Uh, so I've been, I've been pronouncing, oh, I've been pronouncing so it wrong. Funny. He is so funny, that guy. It's unbelievable. And he, he's got 44 million views this week. And Tim, I was just doing some math. Am I right that he's making like triple figures a week on this channel? Is that, is that I, right? I think so, yeah. That's yeah. unbelievable. I mean, he's, yeah. if, if he's at $5 per thousand, he's like over $200,000 this week. Well, that's if an ad gets served on everything. But I would, right. I would bet he's probably doing about 100, 150 grand a month. Wow. That's wow. Take home. That's Have a nice remarkable. day. Yeah, and Maker's getting a little bit of what, what he's got there. Well, that's right. He, yeah. and they're getting a lot of it, so I forgot. He's got to share it with them, so yeah, whoops. Right. <laughs> so everyone's, everyone's happy there, I guess, or maybe he, he could be happier. Uh, and then Rihanna is number one uh, with her 60 million views this week. And, you know, what's, what's interesting is uh, just, you know, if Vivo were to ever go off of YouTube, what would that do to the platform, at least from, uh, you know, from a revenue standpoint? Because they're making a ton of money on all this stuff because as, as you can see on the uh, the list here we've got a lot of music right off the top of the bat there but our Disney collector is still down there at number eight she's she had 27 million views this one's a, a really interesting one Alonso she um, takes Disney toys and just opens them and shows what's in it in the box it's like okay. unboxing for Disney toys and apparently kids are like all over this thing so <laughs> I have to show uh, to my kids uh, they like one called Evan Tube they okay. just watch him all the time because he just unwraps the, the, the most amazing stuff for them you know <laughs> I, I'm working on a similar one uh, for Halloween we go to graveyards and we dig up bodies and just open the <laughs> casket and I, I think we get a lot of views <laughs> I think you would <laughs> You know, and it's timely. It's seasonal, so you'll you'll have like a good bump every every year. So, yeah, that reminds me of that guy who who drives to the drive-through with the, uh, the 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 skeleton uh, thing. Did you see that one? Oh, so, oh yeah, yeah. the, the drive-through yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's designed this 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 costume. It looks like a car seat, and he pulls up and scares the crap out of people. When, when I when I pulled up to the uh, the drive-through the other day, it, it they have a, a camera restriction now at the drive-through uh, oh. near me. So I guess the kids have been you know everyone's trying to okay. like copy this guy. So. Funny. Um, <laughs> so now here's another thing related to revenue. Um, online ad revenue, according to TubeFilter, is up 24% in the past year. And I'd actually believe this because my little crappy channel is, you know, I'm, I'm seeing 20% growth a month right now. So I, I'm, awesome. yeah, I, I had a $300 a month last month, which for me is great. Um, so this is uh, from the IAB, uh, $20 billion in revenue between January and June of 2013 for online advertising. So a lot of things are starting to shift over. And this is, I think, Tim, this is going to start eating into broadcast at some point, right? Are we, are, is this where this money's coming from? Yeah, I think it already has eaten into broadcast. The funny thing is, is that broadcasters are able to have less views and still raise their rates um, because they do have a cumulative audience. And, and, you know, they can get people to do something uh, in a short amount of time. Whereas online, I think, is effective. But... We haven't yet seen that moment where, okay, we're going to run these ads tonight on YouTube and tomorrow all these people are going to show up uh, at this movie theater or that type of thing. It, it will happen. I just don't think we've seen that moment yet. And TV is kind of an event still, which is probably why Twitter's doing so, so well with it. That you know, I, The best example would be the... Uh, uh, the the, uh, the show that just ended there. What was it? Uh, Walter White. I, why am I blanking on the name? Uh, uh, Breaking Bad, where everybody was watching the you know the, the season finale almost together, right? Because there was some some significant uh, value to not getting spoiled by it at the uh, office the next morning. And you know that 
that is an example too. If you want to advertise during that finale, a lot of people are going to see that and talk about that ad, right? Which you really can't get online, right? Not, not yet. Anyway, as not soon yet, as everybody tunes into the finale of uh, uh, of Alonzo's project, then, <laughs> then, then, then we'll have, have it. Then it'll happen. Live, so, live is amazing. You know, I, I, I do think. I mean, the, the, you know, a lot of people do watch, and I, I do watch a lot of stuff. You know archive stuff, you know, DVR or, you know, Hulu or stuff like that, Netflix, but but there is a power to live that you, you can't, you know, you can't ignore. And I mean, it's definitely something that I, I hope to work on in, in the future because there's nothing like getting people to watch it at the same time, you know, it, especially if you can mix, like, live with, with other stuff that you can watch at the other time. But there's a combination there that, that I think is uh, hopefully, you know, can work very well. And the interactivity is really addicting and awesome. And <laughs> speaking of interactivity, we have a question, Tim, or actually a comment. Um, uh, Pascal Bremser, who's watching us right now, says that bearded guy looks like Dumbledore. So I'm assuming he means you. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Pascal, for your uh, for your uh, comment there. This is actually the first one we've received in a language we can uh, interpret. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, the next uh, the next story here, Al Jazeera is launching a uh, another YouTube channel. So they've been doing pretty well online, mainly because a lot of cable companies weren't covering it. But Al Gore, as you know, sold um, his his TV network. What was that, Tim? That was uh, Pivot, what was the name of that, that current, TV? Current, current TV. Current, current TV he sold to Al Jazeera. So now they've uh, got a second um, YouTube channel up and running. And you can also stream, I believe, off their website also. So that is, uh, for news, is interesting. You know, news just isn't interesting to people right now. And it's kind of, I think, indicative of our, of our problems. People need to get more interested in the news. So we'll see what happens there. Happier news, though, movies. Uh, number five is Runner Runner, $14 million uh, overall so far, $3.7 million weekend. Tim, when is this one about? I, I don't think I saw this one. Yeah, me neither. Uh, maybe Alonzo, do you have any insight on Runner I can, Runner? I can, What's I, can I help you? <laughs> okay, actually, here it is. Uh, Richie, a Princeton college student who pays for school with online gambling, bottoms out and travels to Costa Rica uh, to confront somebody. So that's what I that's totally about. missed that one. I haven't even seen the trailer for that one. Have you heard yeah, of that? This is the first I heard of it. Yeah, uh, Machete Kills is number four. Yeah, How about that one? Yo, Machete. Uh, Danny Trejo. <laughs> uh, 3.9 million. And you know, it's interesting. 3.9 million is the top five, right, for a weekend take. So it, there's wow. there's not a lot of people going to movies here either, right? Yeah. Um, cloudy a lot, with a lot a of people taking their SAT tests and all that stuff. Oh, <laughs> it's that time of the year. Uh, cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2, $14.2 million this weekend, $78 million overall. Uh, Captain Phillips, which is that new movie with Tom Hanks, um, which we all know how it ends. Maybe that's why it only came in at number two at $26 million. And uh, Gravity is hanging on, $122.6 overall, $43 million. The buzz on this thing is really Yeah, a lot growing, of people right? love, love this movie, including Jon Stewart. He's a big fan. <laughs> I have to go have to see, see it. it. Yeah. Uh, and as me, I'm a big space geek, as you all know. So getting the public interested in space is great. Tops on my list. So I'm going to go. Uh, hey, speaking of space, uh, Scott Carpenter died this week. Yeah. Astronaut, 88 he, years old, uh, second wow. man to walk on the moon. I got to work with him early in my career. Uh, we, he Later in his life, he got into underwater exploration and was involved in the grand opening of the Living Seas at Epcot. And uh, so he was, he was a great guy to work with, really nice guy, and, uh, uh, you know, someone who will be missed. Yeah, and he is now, I guess John Glenn now is the only surviving Mercury 7 astronaut. Um, but uh, these guys were, I mean, talk about bravery, going somewhere where you may not get back from. It's really, uh, really remarkable. So on some other TV news, though, Google rolled out a new TV episode and movie uh, search this week, which I think is going to be pretty helpful to people because you're always trying to, when you binge watch, you're trying to remember which one you left off at, right? So um, having a quicker search is uh, going to be interesting. That's according to synopsis.com with a C. Aereo is launching an Android app later this month. There's a big, uh, I guess the, the broadcast networks are uh, asking the Supreme Court to decide on this copyright issue. So this, this is still ongoing. Um, I love Aereo. I, I wish I had it where I am, Tim. Do you have it? Yeah, in LA? it sounds, sounds really cool. I, I wish we had it here in L.A. Um, I mean, to me, it's an antenna with a recording right. device attached. How is it different from having a TiVo hooked up to your house antenna? That's exactly their argument that they're making. And what 
you know, and I think that's been, you know, they, they've found a brilliant loophole in the law that they are renting antennas to people as opposed to <laughs> uh, rebroadcasting, which is what the broadcasters are saying. If you look, you're rebroadcasting, you're saying, they're saying, no, we're not. Every user on our service has this little metal antenna that yeah. they're, it's, they're there's, there's something to. about the whole thing that it seems a little silly that you have to do that. You have to do that kind of loophole. That, you know, obviously, the, the reason people are doing that is because it's not easy to get it. You know, and right. you know, I, I just get annoyed when, when, you know, when these companies make it so hard for you to get something. You know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think smarter people can explain, you know, the reason all these things are packages and the reason they're not easy to get. You know, I, I'd pay something if it was easy and, you know, and affordable. You know, but uh, yeah. And that's the big fight. It's like everything is so mm-hmm. freaking complicated and bureaucratic to get anything. I, I just, uh, you know, I won't go through my my whole litany with the cable company <laughs> again this week, but but you know, I, I've I've found a way. You know, with I had to get an extra box and a cable card to to watch the television that oh, I was already here paying he goes for. Again. Yeah, I, I know. Goes. Sorry, I, I'll calm down. I'll calm down. Do you, watch do my you have video. A white paper. Do you have a white paper on this one, Mark? <laughs> no, I did. I did two YouTube videos about how you can how, how you can set this up. So oh, wow. um, so it. And it works. I'm actually really happy with it now, provided this cable company doesn't try to screw me again. But I know they will. But, uh, and in some ways, it's not their fault either, because what, what, the reason that the broadcast networks are so ticked off over this is that they are able to charge really high fees to these cable providers to have those things carried. And they, they force the cable company to put it on their most basic tier, which then impacts the cost for everybody else. And, and that's what this is all about, because a lot, you know, as, their, as their viewership declines, you know, they're gaining more revenue streams through licensing the rebroadcast of their signal than they are sometimes with, with growing ad revenues. And, and that's what, what they're up against here. And this is really, I mean, they, I, I think the whole TV industry is on really just teetering on the edge of a total massive, very quick shift like the newspaper industry is feeling here. So we will see what happens next there. Now, Twitter and movie studios, um, the rap says that they're going to make a boatload of cash, the movie studios, off of Twitter. And this is a story about, I guess, how you're going to be able to buy movie tickets over Twitter directly or something. I don't, I don't understand what yeah, this one's all about. Yeah, basically, it's going to give you an option to, you know, somebody tweets about something or it's an advertisement, however it's tied in, um, you're going to be able to do an action on that immediately. So, oh, okay. uh, and, and it's a deal with Comcast, I believe, uh, on Twitter. So, so Comcast you, you, owns Universal. Right, and everything else. Yeah. Uh, so, so let me get this straight. So if, if, if I'm on my Twitter, Tim, and you tweet about Gravity, I can, I can, they could pay to have a link to, for me to buy the ticket right then and there. Yeah, and not only that, mm-hmm. let's say that you tweet about a TV show, you could click and you could record it on your, D, on your Comcast DVR at that moment. Yeah, okay. So it just, it, it's, it's adding some of the convenience that we were just mm-hmm. talking about and making it easier for folks mm-hmm. to get the programming they want when it's relevant. Hmm. So I, I cool. think it's a really great idea. That is pretty cool. I, I think, you know, that's going to be neat. I, I think it's probably designed for people without kids who can plan spontaneously. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we'll see, uh, we'll see where, where that thing goes. So, uh, so that is our news for the week, and we'll move into uh, the apps and tips of the week. I'm, I'm going to have, next week, Tim, I'm going to have a, a really neat little gadget from, uh, uh, from HP and Google, but uh, it hasn't arrived yet. But uh, I, I do want to talk. there may be some new, some new uh, gadgets from Apple this week. Isn't there a uh, press event on the 16th? Oh, is it the 16th or the 20th? Second, I can't remember. I'm not it's sure soon. what it is either. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to that. I think we're going to definitely see a new iPad, which is nice because I've got a big, I got a big crack in my iPad screen. That yeah, I'm. I'm thinking iPad, new iPad Mini with a Retina display is is probably on the way, and then probably the new generation iPad as well with a Retina display, which will be very nice because I, I, my iPad is starting. I'm starting to feel like I need a new, a new iPad, and <laughs> uh, and plus I got a baby now. I got, a, I have this Fisher Price like dis- non destructible case that I can put it in for oh, the baby yeah. to play with it. So that's my excuse for buying a new one. <laughs> I did pick up the iPhone 5s, Tim. And how uh, do you like that? I, I like it, and you know what I like most about it is the camera. I mean, the camera is is noticeably better, and the five had a nice camera too. Have you shot any internet shows with that yet? For my review channel, um, which I was with the five also. The, the, um, the thing we're going to see a lot of, and it's going to get old really quick, is all the slow-mo video, because it can record uh, 120 frames per second at 720p. And I was messing around with that a little bit, which is pretty cool. And uh, what's nice is, is that it'll, it'll slow down on the screen for you so and see how it might, it might work. But it basically, it saves a 720p, 120 frames per second file. So you can pop that into Final Cut 
uh, you know, slow it down to 25% and get it to, to really look nice. nice. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. I mean, for a phone, it's, it, it's awesome. <laughs> um, the uh, still pictures are really nice on it, and I, I, you know, I've done, they've done a, a pretty good job. And the fingerprint sensor works pretty, uh, pretty nicely, too. Hey, so. have, you, have you heard about nipple prints? I, I, I have. Um, I have heard about them, and I haven't tried it, um, although I hear it works uh, quite reliably. So <laughs> it's just such a mess to, like, you know, have to take your shirt off each time you want to get into the phone. Well, so. especially if you're lactating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no comment. My wife is upstairs. Uh, so on that note, um, Alonzo, where can people find you on the Internet? Um, I mean, our, our channel's on YouTube. It's uh, under Unlinear TV. That's our, our production company, uh, unlineartv.com, or just search for Murder Projects. It should come right up. Excellent. And we'd love to have you back uh, in a few, maybe a couple weeks or a few months after you've had some audience response. We'd love to hear what you've sure, learned sure, sure. Uh, in doing uh, this. The last, uh, the last chapter goes up uh, October 31st. Okay. Uh, cool. Right on Halloween. And then, so yeah, uh, anytime after that. Yeah, we'd love to hear what you've learned as, as you've tried this experiment out, what other people can... Uh, Absolutely. From that. And Tim, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at onetimstreet.com or on Twitter, either place. Just do a search and he will appear before your <laughs> eyes. Uh, and uh, we are at behindthevideo.com. That will put you up in our Google Plus community. It is growing a little bit every day. Uh, we post the videos of this show there. We also are on YouTube. We're on Stitcher, so you can listen to us with audio as well as on iTunes. And we record every Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, so, or 8.30 a.m. Pacific. So if you go onto our community, you'll be notified of, as to when the next show is going to be. And then you, too, can call Tim Dumbledore. So uh, don't miss it. This is Lon Seidman, and that will do it for this episode of Behind the Video. We are a wrap. Stories for this episode were compiled by producer Jason Perrier. Follow him on Twitter at J-A-S-O-N-P-E-R-R-I-E-R. Behind the Video is a production of Ape Digital Incorporated and the Independent Media Network, LLC. All rights reserved.